Hello and welcome to video number five in my Linux Commands for Beginners series. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at basic file editing. So let's get started. So here on my laptop, ignore the fancy prompt. You can see I have quite an interesting prompt here. I just customized that quite a bit. That's something that you can do in Linux. You can customize the bash prompt or the shell prompt as you see here, but I'm not gonna get into that. I just wanted to let you know that's custom and obviously not typical. Yes, I do have a unicorn here, which is awesome, but that's beyond the scope of this video to talk about how I customize that. So go ahead and ignore that. But with the commands that we've gone over so far, we know how to check our current working directory with the pwd command. We also remember how to use the ls command to list the current working directory, as you see that I'm doing right here. This is my home directory. But how do we actually edit a file or create a file? So there's several commands I wanted to go over in this video. The topic this time around is, of course, file editing, but we could create a simple file with the touch command, and that's the first one that I'm gonna go over. So what I'm gonna do is type touch, and then I'm just gonna call it testfile.txt because I'm not very creative today, but I'll just go ahead and press enter. And let's go ahead and see what happens. So I'll do ls-l. And we can see here that we have a test file that was just created. So what is that file? Well, first of all, we can see that's zero. So its size is basically nothing. We can see the contents of a file by using cat, and then the file name. And I could press tab to auto-complete that. And of course it's gonna do nothing because there's nothing in the file. So basically what I wanna underscore here is that the touch command, and then you, you give it a file name, will simply create a file if that file doesn't already exist. So we see right now that this file was created at 233, 1433 as you see right here, that's the modification time of the file. In, that, in this case, that's when the file was created. But what I wanna show you is what happens when you use the touch command against a file that already exists. So if I use touch, then testfile.txt, and then I'll go ahead and use ls again. We can already see the difference. This is when I created the file, and then when I ran the touch command again, it actually updated the modification time, which, which is exactly what it will do if the file already exists. Go ahead and clear the screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a text editor to create a file this time. And what I'm gonna use is nano as the text editor. That's a command that's built into most Linux distributions. There, there's some out there that don't have that by default, but almost all of the distributions of Linux that I've used have nano by default. So it should recognize that command. So if I go ahead and press enter with no argument there, it's going to bring me right into the text editor. And just like any graphical text editor, I can simply just start typing here. So I could just type anything that I want and you can see that it shows it right on the screen. I could press enter however many times to go down a few lines, backspace to go up, and of course to delete text. If you've ever used the Vim text editor, which is actually my favorite, you might think that this is easier. And that's why I'm going over Nano is because this text editor is not only available on most distributions of Linux, like I mentioned, but it's very, very easy to use. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and type something random here. And now I have something in this file. Well, I'm actually not editing a file because it says new buffer right here. And a buffer in a text editor on Linux is just you know basically a container for text, so to speak. So it's basically telling me I'm not actually editing a file but I do have some text here, so what exactly should I do? Now down here on the bottom part of the screen, you see several things that we can do. So the little arrow here, or caret symbol, if you will, basically, basically refers to the control key. So for example, control G, I can get help. Control X, I can exit out. Control O is how I saved the file. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna hold control and press letter O. And it's telling me basically to name the file. So I'm going to call it test2.txt, and I'll press enter. And it says it wrote one line. Well, there's only one line in the file, so that makes sense. So, the, so it's actually there. So what I could do now is do control X to exit out. If I do ls-l, 
we see that I have the new file right here. And unlike the other one, the original one, which was empty, this actually does have, have a size to it, a non-zero size. So we do know that that does contain something. So if I use the cat command against that file, it's going to show me the contents, which is of course just that right there, that one line. So there's not really anything important in there. I just wanted to show you the, um, you know, saving the file and then showing the contents of that file. Now, as you remember, we have two files. We have test2.txt. We also have testfile.txt, the original one that we created with the touch command. Now with the nano command, I can actually give it a file name as an argument. Now if I do test3.txt, then I'm editing test3, which didn't exist. So if I save this, I'll just put some random test in here, for example, control O, and then enter, and then control X. You can see that now that that file exists. So that just shows you that I'm able to give a file name as an argument, and if I save the file, it'll be created. Now you recall though that I do have a file already, testfile.txt, which is empty, so I could just do nano and I could go against testfile.txt, which was of course empty, but then I can go ahead and put in something here. So I'll write Linux is awesome, and then control O, enter, and control X to exit out. And you can see now that I have three different files here that each contain different things. We'll get back to the video in just a moment, guys, but before we do, I just wanted to quickly mention my sponsor, Linode. Linode is an awesome provider of cloud Linux servers, and their cloud manager dashboard makes it extremely easy to set up your own Linux server in seconds. Whether you like Fedora, Debian, Ubuntu, or whatever your distribution of choice is, you can have your very own Linux server running your favorite distribution in a geographic location near you with the latest one just recently introduced in Toronto. So go ahead and check out the link in the description below this video where you can get $20 in credit towards your own Linux server. So go ahead and check that out and let's get right back to the video. So that was the nano text editor, which, you know, like I mentioned is default in most Linux distributions. So you most likely have the nano command. If you're ever curious, by the way, and I'm not gonna put this in its own tutorial because it's super easy. The which command is useful to know if a command is present. So nano, for example, I can use as an argument to the command. It tells me where that binary is if it's present at all. If it's not installed, then that just won't have any output at all. But if I didn't already know, you know, whether or not nano was installed on the system, the which command would tell me. And another editor is vim. So which vim, let's see if that's installed. And it is, we can see that we also have vim. Vim is a very common text editor. So at this point, I'm going to talk a little bit about Vim, but you don't have to follow along with me. Nano is pretty much all you need. It's, like I mentioned several times, available on pretty much every distribution. Vim isn't always available, but it's my preferred editor because it just has a lot of options and a lot of different things you could do. It's just extremely popular. I highly recommend you learn it at some point. I didn't learn it until several years into my Linux career, so um, you definitely don't need to learn Vim but it's recommended because you know it is also very common. So I'm gonna show you a little bit about Vim right now to give you some very, very basics of it, and then I'm gonna close the video, but you can actually stop the video right now and move on to the next, because if all you needed to know was how to do basic file editing, well, you already know that with Nano, and you can use that right away, you don't need to know Vim. But if you're sticking around and you haven't skipped to the next video already, then I assume that you actually wanna see that, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so back here on the terminal, I'll go ahead and clear the screen. Now, if Vim isn't installed already, so if you do which Vim, then you get no output, then you need to install it. I'm running on an Ubuntu-based distribution. It's actually Pop! OS, but it's based on Ubuntu. So I'll give you the command to install it if you are also running on an Ubuntu-based system, which includes Linux Mint, just in case you don't already have that command available. You don't have to worry about the command I'm giving you right now, but I'm just gonna go ahead and install it. So sudo apt install vim 
Knox. That's the name of the package. It's already installed though, so I'm not going to press enter, but if you're on a Ubuntu-based system, then this command would install that for you. And just like Nano, I could simply type Vim, and then I am now in the Vim text editor. As I mentioned, it is more advanced than Nano, so it's not gonna be as easy, but it is very, very powerful. Now we can already see some helpful text here on the screen. We can see how to exit Vim, which there's a running joke in the Linux community where someone might say, I've used Vim for many years because I can't seem to figure out how to exit. <laughs> um, and that's just a running joke, but it's actually not hard to exit. It's just colon Q, so just colon, letter Q for quit, and then enter, and you're out. That's just that simple. I press the up arrow to recall that command, and we have some other information here, like it tells you how to get to help or, and things like that. So how do you use Vim? So if I just type some random letters here, um, some weird things just happened. I just pressed some random letters and what I typed wasn't exactly what happened. So let me explain. There's several different modes in Vim and I'm not gonna give you a, an entire overview of Vim because that's a tutorial series of and by itself. In fact, I actually have an entire series on Vim. So if you're wondering how to use it, you can check that out. I'm gonna give you the very, very basics in this video. So first of all, we can change modes and be able to edit the file. So right now we can do letter I, and you can see down here it changed to insert mode. So we can go to insert mode, and then I can press escape to go back to the command mode. Now in command mode, I can't type normally. So if I type the letter Q, and um, you know, see how it basically shows recording, but the letter Q didn't appear on the screen. And that's why Vim might be a little more advanced than others because you have to actually be in insert mode to actually edit a file. So if I press I to go into insert mode, now I can just type as normal, just like I would in Nano. Even the backspace works, so I can go back and clear out everything that I've typed. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some random text in here again, learn linux.tv, I'll put that back in there. And to save the file, you have to be in command mode. So you press escape and notice when I do that, this insert here on the bottom is gonna go away. So I'll press escape and then it's gone. So to save the file, you do colon and you do W for write. But we don't actually have a file name. So let's just see what happens when I press enter without giving it a file name. It says no file name. So it doesn't really know what I want to save it as. Well, that makes sense. We gotta give it a name. So colon W space, and you give it a file name. So I'll do test4.txt and press enter. And it tells me that the file was written. Then I could do colon Q to quit out of the text editor. So if I list the storage, we can see that I actually do have the file that I saved test4.txt, I saved in Vim, and there it is. And just like Nano, I can do Vim and then a file name as an argument here. And we can see that text is actually there. So one trick I like to do is hold shift and press A, which gets you into insert mode, but that actually is append, which puts the cursor at the very end of the line so you can immediately start typing. So I can just press enter a couple of times and type again, Linux is awesome. So I added some new text to the file and now I can press escape. Now before I did W and I did test4.txt to give it a file name. But since I already had saved this in the past and I'm just editing an existing file, I can simply do colon W and press enter and it'll just overwrite that file with the latest version. And, another, and there's all kinds of different shortcuts and tweaks or tricks and things you could do here. One of my favorites is deleting an entire line. You just press D twice, and I could do it again, and I just deleted two lines, and then I could simply do colon W, and then I can quit out and check the file, and there we go, it has text. So as I mentioned, Vim is advanced. It's a great text editor. I recommend that you learn it, but don't overwhelm yourself. If you just simply need to learn how to edit files, 
Nano is totally fine. In fact, some people, they never use more than that. They go their entire career using only something like Nano. But Vim is just better. I just wanted to give you guys a look at two different editors. If you don't have a preference, Nano's fine for now. So hope that was helpful for you guys and go ahead and stay tuned for the next video. I should have up that uploaded very soon. So thanks again for watching. Thank you so much for watching my video. I really appreciate it. If you want to help me out, make sure you check out the description below this video where you'll find links to my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server, second edition, as well as my Patreon page. If you like this video, be sure to click that like button and share it on Twitter or any other social media network. And be sure to subscribe so you'll be the first to see my latest videos as they're uploaded. Thanks again.